question on how this can actually create jobs and help make a little dent into this larger problem that we're talking about here. I've already hired three military spouses um, to work for my company. Um, I'm dedicated to hiring from within the military community. So really, what I look at the Jonas Project as is in the military we call them force multipliers. So a tank. A tank's a force multiplier for us. It probably means as much as, you know, some would say 100 men, you know, one tank. Well, the Jonas Project is like a tank for guys like us that want to go out and, and create jobs within the military community. So when you're talking about these young guys, believe me, I get it. I had 45 of these 18, 19, 20-year-olds that were looking at me, you know, as their platoon commander. Um, and we were ready to go over to Afghanistan. Um, and they were looking at me, you know, for leadership. And that overwhelming kind of sense of responsibility I felt at that moment when I first addressed these guys, these 18, 19, 20-year-olds, and got to know them and to know what they were going to be dealing with when they had to transition out of the military, um, I feel very much obligated to, be, to, to address, have, make, a, make a small little impact on that, that issue of them transitioning out and finding jobs. It's been a journey, and, and John and Terry and Kim, they all know the, you know the stories, the ups and downs. I've lost two partners who were very close to me, you know, decided to go another route. Um, we've almost gotten a legal dispute with our old tech developer, and you know, so the cash flows have kind of gone come, come and gone, but you know, the one stable part of that has been the Jonas Project. I mean, I met them very early on, last February, and they've been the one stable thing that I can count on. And, uh, you know, just to answer the, the question you had about, um, you know, giving opportunities for military members to work, one of the things that I'm going to try to do first is publish military memoirs. Um, so individuals who come back from war, individuals who have stories that want to publish that, they can have an area where they get help to be able to publish it, but then they also keep 85% of every single How are you going to distribute it? It's going to be ebooks to start first, and then uh, the company's going to take care of talking to all the online distributors and stuff like that to make sure it goes. Um, in the future, I'd really love to have a, a printer or something like that, but for now, because I just started in October, I'm kind of doing the whole, uh, you know, ebooks and everything like that. So um, eventually, I'd like to hire a whole bunch of, you know, working with other other veterans and stuff like that, and have them as as editors because you know we all kind of speak the same language. You know, I talk about when you get that. I got out. I joined the Marine Corps very late in life. I was 28. I was a CPA in the state of Michigan. Then I joined the Marine Corps and became a Marine officer, and then spent my 30s, early 30s, basically as a Marine officer. So it was a little different kind of path. Um, but I knew how valuable professional networks were before I got in the Marine Corps, and then I became a Marine officer, and I just had military networks. I dropped all my business professional networks. And then I transitioned out and I immediately started a company and then I was like, well, I don't know anybody in California, I'm from Detroit, and I don't know anybody in the business community anymore and I'm trying to, you know, I have a kind of a tech startup that I'm trying to like, you know, conceptualize and found. Um, and I think that's probably very common is, is all my connections where my buddies that are still serving, most of them, 90% of them. Um, so I spent the first six months instead of working on my product. I spent the first six months just networking and trying to trying to meet people, um, you know, that, that could help me out, mentor. Or because I got out and then all of a sudden my buddies started to go, you know, back home or they got back moved east. around and stuff like that. So like as soon as I started, I was like, who do I go to? I don't know anybody around <laughs> exactly. here. And so I did the same thing. I went to network meetings and stuff like that, and that's how I actually found the Jonas Project because mm -hmm. I was uh, I went to a web developer to talk about, you know. One of my designs is like, oh, I just heard about this thing called the Jonas Project. You should apply. So I went to the website and went. Okay, I'm gonna give it a shot, and then it just uh, it went from there. So I I went through the same thing because like you know like you said you know, all these people you know in the military, and then once they're gone, that's like, well, what do I do now? The, the thing that impresses me most now is that both you guys chose a field where you're totally familiar, where you're passionate about it, and where you're practical about it. So I think that's that's the the overall thing. This is. Uh, if if answer Julie's first question is what is the you know I, I always say I like to do things that are, that, are, that are good and I like making a big living and living well and all that stuff but there has to be a, behind it uh, 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 a greater cause you know uh, that not necessarily directly reflects on you but that that we all live with it that that that's that's that, that that's there. Uh, and and I, I, I just want to compliment you because you didn't decide on something that is out in left field. That uh, you, you you started with something you like to do, and with 
than with which you're familiar.